Welcome back, folks. Uh, well, as you know, we start off with the weather and in our second segment. So why don't I hand it off to Ash? Weather, well, <laughs> sorry, folks. Back to the hundreds today. And for the next couple of days, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have 100 today, 104 tomorrow, and 100 degrees for Wednesday. But after that, we are going to fall back down into the 90s, thank goodness. Oh, definitely. Let's hope it stays lower because coming <laughs> up next weekend, folks, Come on down to the Greek Food Festival. I know you've heard Kopi talking about it. Oh, Greek yep. food. Greek Food Festival. You know I'll be there. Hey, I'm a proud Greek. I'll be there, too. <laughs> I'm a proud eater. Well, there you go. We <laughs> actually like you. Yes, you so guys you love me. So you need to come, come have some Greek food. Hopefully the temperatures will stay down. Everyone can come out and have a good time. It's going to be a good thing. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll try to talk to Kopi, folks. Yes. We'll try to talk to him, try to get him to come on. Kopi, if you're watching, please come on next Kobe. week. It'd be great please. to have you here. It'd be great to talk about the, the Greek Food Festival with you and Ash. So uh, come on. Come yeah. on down. All right, well, let's go ahead and get to the news, folks. Um, first off, we've got a Boeing 737 carrying 131 people was struck by lightning from a thunderstorm and broke apart as it slid onto the runway mm. on the Caribbean island of San Andreas early this morning. 125 passengers and six crew members had been aboard the Ares Flight 8520, but miraculously, only one person died. Okay, well, next up, it looks like KFC, the fast food franchise, is essentially suing itself over the F. That's right, folks. A few of the franchise owners of Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants have been angered by the company's 2009 decision to focus on their grilled chicken rather than their fried chicken. Uh, they blame KFC's falling sales um, on the current president, Roger Eaton's decision in early 2009 to emphasize a grilled chicken over KFC's tried and true fried chicken. Managers at the Yum brand owned chain say they're trying to reach the health conscious on the go customers. Personally, I would rather have grilled chicken than fried chicken. I don't know if it's a big difference for a lot of people, but you know, we're trying to be more health conscious and I see what KFC's trying to do, but I guess, you know, many of the franchise owners aren't happy that and their second quarter revenue in most U.S. stores fell at least 7%. Now, considering what's going on in the world today, 7%, I think most businesses are suffering from a 7% fall. Very true. And a lot of people are trying to be more health conscious, which may also include not going to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going to go with it. I mean, I, I, I try to stay away from a lot of fast food places. Mm -hmm. And when I do go to fast food places, I'm very picky about where I go. Yeah. Well, my question is, when you think of healthy chicken, do yeah. you generally think of Kentucky Fried Chicken? No. Exactly. That's my point. By the time that they start getting folks to think of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken as healthy, mm -hmm. by that point, they probably won't have any revenue left. <laughs> Maybe they should try changing their name to Kentucky Grilled Chicken. See well, how that goes for you. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that's going to cause more problems than that. <laughs> well, you know, personally, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Kentucky Fried Chicken, but when I do go there, I don't get the chicken. Their mashed potatoes and gravy <laughs> is so good. No, seriously, it's the best mashed potatoes and gravy. I get the large mashed potatoes, the large gravy, and that's what you eat. Don't forget the biscuits. Uh, you know what? I feel there are enough carbs in the potatoes. Well, I guess since I'm a <laughs> carb fan, it doesn't really matter to me. Mashed potato sandwich? Yeah, that sounds about right. There we go. Mashed potatoes there on a biscuit. We go. That with sounds some cheese, wrong. That's wrong. Dip it in the gravy. Wrong. Even though That's I don't wrong. eat gravy. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get back onto the news. Uh, oh. Big tax, hi tax hikes are on the way. But don't blame the current administration or even the current legislatures on this one, folks. Blame the tax cuts we received in 2001 and 2003 for this ridiculous situation. A law in 2001 required income taxes to return to their pre-2001 levels by the end of 2010. Everyone will, be pay, will pay higher income taxes if the law is not changed. The tax rate uh, on corporate dividends should rise at as high as 39.6 next year and 15% currently. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of taxes, folks. It's a lot of taxes. Not looking forward to that. Oh, well. Well, the Obama administration has announced that it will no longer allow new deep water drilling projects to go forward without environmental reviews. Well, that's good news. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Considering everything that's happened, that's, you know, go Obama. Yeah. <laughs> we go don't want to see more oil spills or any other kind of damage that no. could be done. 
It's unfortunate. Yes, definitely. Or loss, more, any more loss of lives out there on the oil rigs. Very true. Yeah, that was devastating to hear. Uh, in other presidential news, Friday was the 75th anniversary of Social Security and was also the day that President Obama made his weekly address. In the address, the president promised to protect Social Security from the Republican leaders in Congress who have made uh, privatization a key part of their agenda. He makes his point clear that especially in the light of the financial crisis, gambling Social Security on Wall Street makes no sense. We now go to the uh, president's weekly address for more. Seventy-five years ago today, in the midst of the Great Depression, Franklin Roosevelt signed Social Security into law, laying a cornerstone in the foundation of America's middle class and assuring generations of America's seniors that after a lifetime of hard work, they'd have a chance to retire with dignity. We have an obligation to keep that promise, to safeguard Social Security for our seniors, people with disabilities, and for all Americans, today, tomorrow, and forever. Now, we've been talking for a long time about how to do that, about how to make sure Social Security is healthy enough to cover the higher costs that are kicking in now that baby boomers are retiring. And I'm committed to working with anyone, Democrat or Republican, who wants to strengthen Social Security. I'm also encouraged by the reports of serious bipartisan work being done on this and other issues in the Fiscal Commission that I set up several months ago. One thing we can't afford to do, though, is privatize Social Security, an ill-conceived idea that would add trillions of dollars to our budget deficit while tying your benefits to the whims of Wall Street traders in the ups and downs of the stock market. A few years ago, we had a debate about privatizing Social Security. And I'd have thought that debate would have been put to rest once and for all by the financial crisis we've just experienced. I'd have thought, after being reminded how quickly the stock market can tumble, after seeing the wealth people worked a lifetime to earn wiped out in a matter of days, that no one would want to place bets with Social Security on Wall Street, that everyone would understand why we need to be prudent about investing the retirement money of tens of millions of Americans. But some Republican leaders in Congress don't seem to have learned any lessons from the past few years. They're pushing to make privatizing Social Security a key part of their legislative agenda if they win a majority in Congress this fall. It's right up there on their to-do list with repealing some of the Medicare benefits and reforms that are adding at least a dozen years to the fiscal health of Medicare, the single longest extension in history. That agenda is wrong for seniors, it's wrong for America, and I won't let it happen. Not while I'm president. I'll fight with everything I've got to stop those who would gamble your Social Security on Wall Street. Because you shouldn't be worried that a sudden downturn in the stock market will put all you've worked so hard for, all you've earned, at risk. You should have the peace of mind of knowing that after meeting your responsibilities and paying into the system all your lives, you'll get the benefits you deserve. Seventy-five years ago today, Franklin Roosevelt made a promise. He promised that from that day forward, we'd offer some measure of protection to the average citizen and to his family against poverty-stricken old age. That's a promise each generation of Americans has kept. And it's a promise America will continue to keep so long as I have the honor of serving as president. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful weekend. Hey folks, okay, um, it seems that a recent study has been made to the errors that parents make when measuring children's doses of oral medication. Mm. Uh, kind of a scary thing, but yeah. uh, this next clip from the FDA has a little more information for you. The Institute for Safe Medication Practices recently reported on a study of the errors parents make when measuring children's doses of oral medications. In the study, 300 parents were observed as they attempted to measure liquid doses using dosing cups, droppers, dosing spoons, and oral syringes. Parents using dosing cups made many more errors than those using the other methods. The cups were also associated with large dosing errors, where the measured dose differed from the prescribed dose by more than 40 percent. Parents with low health literacy scores were more likely to make errors. The authors of the study speculate that the higher failure rate with the dosing cups 
might be due to legibility difficulties or to parents assuming that a full cup is the unit of measure or to confusion between teaspoon and tablespoon markings, especially with the abbreviations for teaspoon and tablespoon. When using dosing cups, parents should always verify the dose at eye level. But whichever dosing device you provide for your patients, ISMP recommends using the teach-back method. That's where the parent or caregiver demonstrates that they understand how to use the device before it's dispensed. Folks, in the rise of our oil crisis, more and more folks are turning to the hybrid cars. Well, a new type of hybrid has just been announced to hit the market next year, a human electric hybrid. That's right, folks, a human electric hybrid. The human car, Imagine PS, is, the, is a street-legal four-seater vehicle that uses hand cranks. It can take on hills at 30 miles per hour and exceed 60 miles per hour on flat terrain. Human Car is the brainchild of Charles Samuel Greenwood, an engineer who has been working on developing and self-funding the perfect human-powered vehicle since the late 1960s. That's definitely interesting, I uh, have to say. I mean, I, I, I've seen the clip of what the cars look like. I wouldn't mind trying it, but I don't know if I'd buy it. I mean, drive that car over the grapevine. <laughs> and then tell me how much you like it. I mean, I, I admire what he's done, what mm -hmm. he's come up with, what he's designed. That's amazing. And, you know, for around town, great. Definitely. But that's almost a car that you, you can't have as an only car because then you can't travel. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, definitely, if he brings it out, maybe other manufacturers might start thinking about doing something that does not rely on gas and isn't going to charge an arm and a leg for. There you go. Yeah, but anyway, we need to go to our next commercial break and... Coming up next, we've got the World of Meh with their uh, standard feature, and hope to see you guys back in just a couple minutes.